Now that the decoction has been boiling for about 30 minutes, it's time to return a part of it to the main mesh to reach the protein rest temperature of about 55 degrees Celsius. To do that, I take the thermometer on one hand and the mesh pad on the, in the other and just stir up the main mesh to see what temperature it's at. And then I'll use the measuring cup to just scoop the hot mesh into the main mesh and mix it in while stirring. By doing so, one can easily monitor how the temperature, the destination temperature is approached and there's also no sudden scorching of the enzymes. So I now reach the desired 55 degrees in the main mesh and I will hold that for just a short protein rest of 10 minutes. With most modern malts, actually including this malt, it is fine to just skip this protein rest and use the decoction directly to go to the sacrification rest. But I wanted to show how to do actually another step by just using part of the decoction. So I, I noticed earlier that I lost about two liters of water during the boil, so I'll be adding that to the boil and bring it back to the decoction and bring it back to a boil to, to be then ready to reach the sacrification rest temperature. So 15 minutes later, I'm ready to infuse again, this time to go, come to the sacrification rest. So as you can see here in the mash down, there's still a lot of starch left because it is not, has not been converted yet and that's where you get the milky color from. As I, as I add the decoctions, you do see the color change, but that color change is not so much because the decoction has darkened a lot, it's actually because the decoction has gelatinized and converted starches in it, and it is not, does not have this milky color anymore. So again, we are infusing slowly to raise the temperature slowly and make sure that we don't overshoot it. So here I'm trying to get to 67 degrees Celsius and it looks like I'm almost there. There's still a significant amount of decoction actually left so I must have infused too much water to compensate for, for the boil off. So I will be actually just let, letting this cool to about 67 degrees and then add it later. While the mesh is resting for sacrification for 45 minutes, I will be heating my sparge water on the burner. So I want to take the opportunity to also show what an iodine positive starch test looks like. So I'll just retake a sample from the mesh and add a drop of iodine. And as you can see, it turns a dark purple. 45 minutes later, I move the sparge water to a cooler and I am just want to check the conversion of the main mesh, so I'll just take a sample for the iodine test. So it looks as if we are just about ready now to pull the second decoction to get to mash out and the remaining conversion will then be done at mash out temperature. Since you don't have to preserve enzymes in this decoction as the mash is almost converted, I, I like to pull this decoction thin and the best way to do it is to actually drain from the mash louder ton into the decoction kettle until the, de the desired volume is reached. So here we are looking to get about six and a half liters of decoction. But you can also just take a measuring cup and just scoop decoction, thin decoction 
or thick decoction if if you want to from the from the lava tun. Do both here to get out quicker. So the decoction will be brought to a boil in within 10 or 15 minutes. There is no need to hold a conversion rest as it is almost converted anyway. So after boiling this mash for about 10 minutes, I will be returning it to the main mash to reach a mash out temperature of about 76 <coughs> degrees Celsius. And this mash out serves to stop the beta amylase activity, which basically sets the word from fermentability. And it really supercharges the alpha amylase so it can convert any leftover starches which may have been released during the boil of the decoction or may be released during the louder process. So there's no need to hit the temperature precisely, although I do want to check it. Being a few degrees below or above does not really make a difference, though you should not really exceed 78 degrees Celsius, which would stop the alpha amylase activity. Now that the mash is completely converted, I'll start the louder and I'll, be, I'll recirculate a few times before I run into the kettle. But at this point, you are free to use any louder method that you want to use because the process of mashing itself is now over. So now, now I'm just checking that the first word was truly converted. So I'll just take a sample of it. And it truly is. We are almost at the end of this bulge and I just want to point out how much protein has been coagulated by the decoction mesh. So you, as you can see the tyke that, that's on top of the grain is pretty pronounced because of it having been a decoction mash. And now let's recap what's necessary for a hassle-free decoction mash. Make decoction mashes thin mashes, 3 to 4 liters per kilogram, as long as your equipment allows you to. Allow for a buffer in the decoction size. About 10 to 20 percent are sufficient. Don't make the decoctions too thick, otherwise they become difficult to handle and easily scorch. Heat the decoctions gently. Rest them for conversion, especially when using large amounts of Munich molds. Return the decoctions in small steps to avoid overshooting the target and damaging the enzymes. Allow any leftover decoction to cool and add later. Check for conversion since enzymes will be damaged during this process. With that, Hopfen and Malz got out. Before I end this video, I have here the samples that were pulled before and after the decoction boil. On the left hand side is a sample that was pulled at the beginning of the boil, and on the right hand side there's the sample that was pulled after 30 minutes of the decoction boil. And as you can see, the color of the right sample is slightly darker, but not significantly. That shows that a decoction does not con significantly contribute to color increase in the beer.